So first let's quickly discuss how to f uh, find the median of a given set of numbers. So the first set of numbers is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. The number of numbers is 5. Notice that it's arranged in order. It's arranged in increasing order. It's easy to locate the middle number. There's one middle number because n is an odd number. So if we have an odd number of numbers arranged in order, the middle number is the median. Another way of finding the middle number is n plus 1. We add 1 because it's an odd number. We make it even. So that's 5 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 3. So that gives us the position of the median. So this just says that the third number is the median. So what is the third number? The first is 1, the second is 1, the third is 2. So 2 is the median. Now let's look at the next set of numbers. We have 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. n, in this case, count the number of numbers. It's equal to 6. So if we have an even number of numbers, if it's even, then there are two middle numbers. And once we locate the two middle numbers, take the average of it. And in this case, it's 2.5 take the average of the two middle numbers and that would be the median. Another way of finding uh, the location of the middle numbers is take n. n is even, so it is divisible by 2. So in this case, take 6, divide by 2 and you get 3. So take this number, the third and the next one, so adding 1 to 3 would make it 4. So the fourth, the third and the fourth numbers are the two middle numbers. And once you get the two middle numbers, find out what they are. So we have 1, 2, 3. So the first middle number is 2. And then the second middle number is 3. Then we take the average of those two numbers to find the median. So the median is uh, 2.5 and in the previous case the median is 2. So the important thing to remember here is that if there are an odd number of numbers then there is one middle number and if there are an even number of numbers then there are two middle numbers. So that is important to remember. If you're given a histogram, first read the question. So the question here says, these are grades of 370 students. So N is 370. So this histogram represents uh, the grades on a certain test for 370 students. So what are the possible values of the grades? So the possible values are either 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5. These are the possible uh, values of the grade. Um, now let's look at the first bar. What exactly does the first bar tell us? So the score is 0. You can call it the grade or the score is 0. How many students scored a 0? Let's figure that out because the y-axis for a histogram is the counts. So it's uh, about 25 students scored a zero on the test. Now look at the second bar. What does the second bar tell us? If you look at it approximately and it's okay to be off by a little bit, 65 students scored a one. Now if you look at the third bar, that's about 80. So 80 students scored a 2 on the um, test. And if you can uh, look at each bar, you'll be able to figure out how many students scored, for example, 3. How many students scored a 4? How many students scored a 5? So notice that the histogram gives us the entire data set for 370, especially this particular 
uh, bar graph or a histogram, you could call it. I've created it as a bar graph. So it gives us the information for 370 students, not just the five grades that you see there. So the five grades are just the possible grades, but then the height of each bar tells us how many students got it. So if, if I had to recreate the raw data set, this is what it would look like. I'd, the first number would be zero, 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 zero. And then it'll keep going for about 25 zeros, okay? And then that's zero and then zero. The next set of numbers is 65 ones. So there'll be a one, 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 one. And it'll go on to about, to exactly about 65 ones and then one, one. And then you have the twos. How many twos do we have? We have 80 twos. So it'll be two, 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 just keep going. Uh, there'll be 80 twos according to the number that I have here. And then it'll go for about 80 twos. And then you can imagine what the rest of the data set looks like. So this histogram represents 370 scores. So this is what you have to keep in mind when you calculate the median, the quartiles, or the mean. Now let's find the, the median of this data set, uh, which is represented by this given um, bar graph. So the number of numbers in this data set is 370. The first thing to notice that it's an even number. If it is even, then uh, remember what we talked about earlier, there are two middle numbers. Okay, 370 is even. You do not have to add one, just divide by two. It is divisible by two. So, The 185th number is the first middle number. The next one, which would be the 186th number, would be the second middle number. So these two are the ranks of the middle numbers. So now we know where uh, they sit and or what their position is in the list arranged in either increasing or decreasing order. But now we have to go back to the histogram and figure out what it is. Now let's find out what the 85th and the 86th numbers are from the histogram. So again, remember that the first bar contains 25 numbers. So what that means is if I were to locate the uh, 10th number, for example, since the first 25 numbers are zeros, my 10th number would then be um, zero. But what I need to locate is the 185th number. So I know it's not going to be the first 25 numbers because the first 25 numbers are zeros. Now, let's look at the next 65 numbers. The next 65 numbers are ones. So when I add these two numbers, I get 90, which means that the first 90 numbers are either zeros or ones, but I'm looking for the 185th number. So the next bar contains 80 numbers, and those 80 numbers are all twos. So now let's look at the sum of all these. 25 plus 65 plus 80 is 8 plus 6 is 14, 15, 16, so that's 170. So the first 170 numbers are either zeros or ones or twos. So that's the first 170 numbers. Remember again, we're trying to look for the 185th number. Now the next 70 numbers are threes. So do you see that 
the next 70 numbers are 3's. So therefore, my 185th number has to be part of this bar. So my 185th and the 186th numbers sit in this bar, which means those numbers are 3's. So if both my numbers, 185th and 186th numbers are both 3's, I add the 2, divide by 2, I take the average, which is again 3. So 3 is the median of this distribution. Now let's find the lower quartile Q1 of the same distribution. So remember how uh, the data set is set up. So the median is the middle number or in this case the average of the uh, two middle numbers. To the left of the median is 185 numbers and to the right of the median is 185 numbers because we have a total of 370 uh, numbers. So we have one, the first number, the second and so on up to the 185th number. Then we have the median which is really the average of the 185th and the 186th. Then we have the 186th number and it goes on until the 370th number. So we have 185 numbers on the left and 185 numbers on the right. So the lower quartile Q1 is the median of the numbers on the left and the upper quartile is the median of the uh, 185 numbers on the right. So let's look at the left half which is the 185 numbers on the left. Now we repeat the same process except remember that 185 is odd so we're going to find the one middle number and how do we do that? If you remember, 185 is odd, so we add one, make it even, because now it would be divisible by 2, so that would be 186 divided by 2, so that would be 93. What exactly is this 93? This tells us that the 93rd number is the lower quartile. It's the 93rd number that we are looking for. 93 is not the lower quartile. So now we go back to the histogram. The first 25 numbers are zeros. So obviously the 93rd number cannot be um, zero. So we have 25 numbers that are zeros. So the first 25 numbers are zeros. So we cannot find our Q1 in those 25 numbers. The next 65 numbers are 1s. So 65 plus 25 is 90. So the first 90 numbers are zeros or 1s. Now is it clear to you that the 93rd number would be in the next 80 numbers. So the next 80 numbers are 2's. So the 93rd number would have to be in the third bar and the 93rd number would have to be a 2. So our lower quartile Q1 is a 2. Did you notice that we've used the exact same process as we did when we were finding the median of the set of numbers. Now we've gone through the process of finding the median uh, and we repeated a similar process of finding uh, the lower quartile which was really the median of the left half of the data set when the data set was divided into two parts by the median. So we had 185 numbers, then the median and then the 185 numbers. So on either side of the median were the 185th and the 186th numbers. So the right half of the data set also contains 185 numbers. So obviously the middle number 
will be uh, the 185 plus 1 divided by 2 that is the 93rd number just like we did for the um, the left half of the data set and that's how we found the lower quartile but now we have to remember that uh, we need to find the position so the upper quartile is the 93rd number but then we have to remember that we have to start counting from the 186th number the way to figure that out easily is by adding 93 to 185 which will tell us exactly uh, the location of the upper quartile so that's 17 so it's the 278th number that is uh, the upper quartile q3 so now we follow the same process to figure out exactly what the 278th number is we do the same counting procedure 25 plus 65 plus 80 plus 70 is 240 which means that the first 240 numbers are zeros uh, ones twos uh, threes uh, but then the next few numbers would then be fours so that tells us that the 278th number is 4. So the upper quartile is a 4. So it's important to understand how the counting process works. And it's exactly the same as what we did for the median and the lower quartile. The only thing different here was that uh, the way we figure out the rank or position of the upper quartile is by counting from the 186th number and we can just add one, uh, 93 to 185 to give us the exact location. Now, even if you added the 186 to the 93, you would still get the same number as your uh, upper quartile. In large data sets, uh, one, a rank this one way or the, or the other uh, will not make that much of a difference so whether you figure out the 278th number or the 279th number won't make a huge difference it'll just be the same thing now finally once you understand how the histogram works then figuring out the mean is just a simple calculation using your calculator so what is the basic definition of mean? The basic definition of mean is the sum of all the numbers divided by the total number of numbers. Just remind yourself once again that this has 370 numbers uh, listed or represented in the form of a histogram. Now when you sum all the grades, it is 370 numbers that you have to uh, add up. So how do you do that? The first bar contains 25 zeros. So the total of the zeros is 0 times 25. The second bar contains 65 ones, which means that if we add all the ones, we get 65 times 1. The third bar contains 80 2's, so the sum of all the 2's is 80 times 2. The fourth bar contains 73's, so the sum of all the 3's is 3 times 70. The fourth bar contains, uh, or the fifth bar contains 94's, so if you add up all the 4's, that would be 4 plus 4 plus 4, 90 such 4's, so that would be 90 times 4. And finally, 5 times 40 would be the sum of all the 5's. When you add all those numbers, that gives us the sum of all the grades. When we divide it by 370, we get 2.6891, and that is the mean of all the numbers represented in this histogram.